What's up guys? In case you ever bought a pair of Crank Brothers pedals before and uh, well, you're too lazy to read this and just want to watch a video, let's do it. So to start, this video is for all the riders out there who've already kind of been introduced to rod and clipped in. Um, you know, either you're switching from SPDs or you've always ridden Crank Brothers but you've never quite been able to set them up correctly or you just want to know how to set them up better. Um, if you're still in that sort of flats versus clips, wrong video, watch something else. It's kind of more like the technical setup behind Crank Brothers pedals. Um, so let's get started. We're going to focus more on the Crank Brothers, the modern day ones that I think a lot of people use that myself uses, and that's the ones that have a platform. So if you're an XC guy and you're just running the egg beater pedals, which just has this part in the middle, um, those are fairly easy to set up. There's not any shoe contact uh, on the surrounding area. so. You kind of just have to do your cleats um, and you don't have to do much of this other stuff that really makes it change how these things work. So um, to get started, <clears throat> what comes in the box with a set of say Maladies or Candies, the more modern ones, you got your cleats and all your other shenanigans. So you got your two cleats, you got some spacers, um, little things that go on top of the cleats and uh, a handful of bolts here. So you basically just have short ones and long ones depending on if you actually use these cleat shims or not. So important thing to note here, one of these cleats has got two dots on it and one of them does not. So that's gonna determine a earlier or later release angle. Um, that's very important. So what that means is when you're actually clipped in, a, uh, an earlier release angle means that 15 degrees, say you're right here, it's gonna unclip. A later, which would be 20, which is the other option, is when you click it all the way out here. And that's, that means you're going to have more float, basically, before the shoe actually comes free from the pedal. Um, and what you want to do is your, uh, your left one, if you have no dots on the left one, that's the earlier release angle. Uh, I would say 98% of people I know run the earlier release angle, myself included. Um, so that just means two dots, right foot. Pretty simple. Um, very important right there because like I said again you have less float which again I like I think 15 is a perfect amount 20 is almost you know you have to you have to twist your ankle so far before that thing comes out that I really like the 15 degree and just about everyone else I can imagine does so um, beyond that shims so these little cleat shims if you're wondering what these were you can see on this shoe right here this actually does have one single shim in here and and what you use that for is to space the cleat off of the shoe so the, why you'd want to do that is if you're getting too much contact with the pedal on the actual rubber, you know, the surrounding pedal area on the rubber of the shoe, um, that's when you'd want to space that cleat above. The, high, the more you space that cleat above, the less of that rubber on your shoe is going to contact this area here. So it's going to make it feel um, more like an egg beater, right? So if you put all those shims in there, it's going to be very like like you're on ice almost because the only thing that's contacting you know on, a, on an egg beater pedal is going to be that actual cleat right on top of the spring right here so you're not going to have any rubber contact um some shoes you need a shim like these shoes that have a pretty you know deep area right here and a lot of like thick rubber you know that's why these have a shim some shoes don't need a shim so uh, kind of depends on your shoe on that one the other important part here um cleat position you put it more towards the toe, you're going more for efficiency. Um, more towards the back, you're going more for stability. You know, you can see this shoe right here, it's got it slammed all the way to the back and all the way in. So uh, this is a downhiller shoe. This is how I set my shoes up, being a previous downhill rider. Cross country guys, road guys, you might want to slide a little more towards the front if you want to have that more power, more on the ball of your foot. Again, if you're going for pure stability, slide that thing all as far back as it can go. Um, and the next thing, which is really nice to do, is, is slide that thing this direction. So basically what you want to do is go away from the bike. So think, hold the cleat in your hand and position it all the way back and then away from the bike. And what's that? when you go away from the bike, that's going to prevent it from, you know, whacking into your crank arm, whacking into your seat stay, your chain stay. Um, pretty common thing, especially if you have big feet or you're riding kind of like bigger downhill style clipless shoes like this. Um, so again, my recommendation there, all the way back, all the way over. But personal preference. Make sure you test, see what you like. You might like it all the way forward. Um, you might have smaller feet, so you might like it, you know, slid in a little bit more so you have that narrower Q factor, which is technically a little more efficient. Um, again, I'm setting mine up for stability um, and ease of use, easy to get in, easy to get out. 
um, you know, stable when you're on the thing. And again, that's what you do when you're a downhill racer or you're going, you're, you want it set up for that, you know, hardcore downhill ride where you're bouncing all over the place and you want to get in and get out. That's kind of what you're going to want to do there. Whereas again, XC, slide it more forward. You're going for like efficiency um, and power, power transfer, that sort of thing. Um, next up, a lot of the newer Crank Brothers pedals, so the newer um, Mallet DHs, the newer Mallet E's um, have these little, I think they call them traction pads. So these little plastic pads and they come in the box with the pedals. Um, they come with the smaller ones on here and they've got thicker ones that come in the box. So what these do, they are a royal pain in the ass to remove and reinstall. And the ones they give you are thicker ones. So you can see this is pretty flush right here. So if you add thicker ones on here, it's gonna give you more, again, sh rubber shoe contact on that traction pad. And that's gonna give you just, it's gonna feel more stuck, more traction, more contact area that's going on there. Um, I tried that when they first came out with this. I tried the different sizes. Um, I don't like it. I think it's almost too much. It makes it really hard to like push in there. Um, it, it basically is doing the opposite of what the shim would do. So the shim would space the cleat downward and keep the, uh, the rubber away from the pedal. Whereas, you know, if you have no shim and you put thicker traction pads, you're putting the ru more rubber contact on that pedal. And the more contact you have on there, the tighter that thing is going to be. So an example you can see there, um, if you even just clip these things in. So... This pedal right here, you got a lot of rubber contact. You know, that you're getting the rubber hitting the pins, which are driven up pretty high on these things. Um, these are the older mallets. Uh, they still do make uh, mallets like this, kind of the cheaper ones. I think the two and the three that don't have traction pads. Um, and again, you can see like on these pedals here, there's, there is actually no um, rubber contact right there in that particular spot. Whereas like this pedal with a traction pad, a thicker one, it might actually be touching there. So again, the, the more contact you have, um, it's going to feel more stable, but it's also going to be harder to get in and get out to some extent um, and kind of tight when you pop in there and tight when you slide out of the thing. So these ones are pretty smooth, right? They go in and they go out. Uh, a huge reason behind that, why I was able to just do that so easily with my hand, is these are broken in shoes and broken in pedals. So the older the pedals get, obviously this spring right here is determining how tight it is to get into that you know into that actual spring loaded clip right there um, it's a spring so over time it's going to wear out it's going to be easier to pop in and pop out of that thing as it gets older um, the other major factor so new shoes are a, play a huge role in how your pedals perform so if you buy brand new shoes and brand new pedals and you think it's just godforsakenly hard to get in and get out that's very normal um, one of the main reasons is because these pins on, on all these pedals, you know, you can see them, all the mallets have got these. Um, the candies don't have them, so you're looking at more just like rubber on there, but the pins especially, they dig into the rubber. And what happens is, over time, as you clip in, clip out, clip in, clip out, these pins will dig grooves in the rubber on your shoe, and then this actual part of the, uh, the pedal right here will dig a groove in, like right behind into the plastic behind the cleat. Um, and again, when it digs in all those grooves, it's making it easier to slide in and slide out. So, um, huge part to it. So once it breaks in and you, you, it digs these rubber grooves in, it digs the grooves in right there. Um, you can see it all over on this, on this shoe, you know, it's, it's ripped out a bunch of meat of the rubber right there. A huge amount is always right back here behind the cleat. Um, as that happens, it gets way easier to get in and get out of these things because the pins then have a, you know, a clear pathway where they can slide. So... Um, easiest way to get your shoes to feel comfortable clipping in, clipping out, just use them. You know, get some miles on them. Once you, once you get a set of new shoes, um, they're going to feel super stiff, super hard to get in and get out, but it's just a matter of time before it feels good and smooth and better. So those are some of the huge things that's important with setting up Crank Brothers pedals. So if, if you put that cleat on there, um, you position it the way you think you want, you know, you, you clip into your bike and it's like really hard, you really have to push hard to get in. And then it's really hard to like, you know, get that thing out of there. You might want to consider, um, you know, drive all your pins down on one of these pedals, like completely flush with the pedal. Drive all the pins down. See how that goes. If it's still too tight, you know, take a look at it. All you got to do is hop off the bike, 
clip in and look at what's contacting. Is, is, you know, if the pins aren't contacting, is it contacting the traction pads? Is there just a ton of rubber all surrounding it contacting the whole body of the pedal? And if that's the case and it's still too tight, that's when you're going to want to use those shims. Um, all this is said in 10 million languages in this uh, book they give you with the pedals, but a lot easier to listen to someone say it and kind of look at how it goes. So those are the key factors to setting up Crank Brothers pedals. Just making sure you do your trial and error, you know, do, do your shoes going to need a shim? Are they not going to need a shim? Where do you like to position your cleat? Um, driving those pins up and down, seeing how much of that you want to be, con how much rubber you want to be contacting there. You know, uh, traction pads, I, I don't recommend playing with those things. Like I said, they're incredibly difficult to get in and get out. I would just leave the ones that they come with. They're just kind of the, the smaller size that's in there. Um, if you really are maybe an old BMX racer and you love that thing to just feel locked in, like you can't, you know, you have to yank on the thing to get it out, almost like a really expensive road pedal. Um, if that's the fuel you're going for, um, then yeah, drive those pins up, don't run a shim, put the thicker traction pads in, and that thing is going to be hard as hell to get in and hard as hell to get out. Uh, most people aren't looking for that. You know, typical riders are looking for something pretty easy to clip in, pretty easy to clip out. That's more of a, what the you know common folk are looking for these days when it comes to pedals, and especially if you're just getting into clipless pedals. Um, you know, it's it's a lot nicer to set your things up with the pins down. You know, maybe put a shim in there or something, and and make it easier on yourself to get in and get out. So cool thing with pedal setup is once you figure it out, you're kind of done. So uh, what I mean by that is that once you figure out your preferences, right, uh, and you get new shoes and you get new pedals, you're kind of set for a long time. I'll give you an example for myself. I love my cleat all the way to the back, all the way over so my feet are away from the frame. Um, I love that position. I think, again, stability for you know my past being a downhill rider and what I like to do on my bike. That's where I want to put my cleat. So I know that. I know I want the cleat with the two dots on my right foot because I want that earlier release angle. And, uh, and then I know what I want to do with my pins typically. So if I'm always running mallet ease, which I've been running the last, you know, ever since I came out almost a couple years, I know how high I want my pins. I know if I want any certain pin all the way down. I know what traction pads I want. Um, so it's pretty easy. And I, I typically try and ride the same model pedals for a couple few years at a time. or um, That way it's just simple. Uh, if you are trying a different model shoe, it's going to have different rubber on it. And you might need a shim. You might you know, not need a shim. Um, you might want to put adjust your pins more than you had on another shoe. But if you're just, you know, for me, example, I'm riding those Mavic Crossmax shoes right now. All As soon as those are dead, I just buy another pair, the exact same ones. And then I get my maladies, the exact same pedals that I've been using. Uh, if I get a fresh pair of those, I already know, like, I don't want the higher traction pads. I want my pins slightly lower than they come in the box. Um, and, and that's really it. And like I said, again, I, I, you know, I like my, I know what cleat I want and what shoe, what position I wanted. And I just bolt it all together and I'm good to go. So the time consuming part is figuring out for yourself what you like, what works best for your shoes, your pedals, your riding style, all that sort of stuff. And it just takes experimentation. It's kind of like setting up suspension. Um, probably almost as confusing depending on who you are, but it's, it's just a matter of figuring out your preferences and what you enjoy. And once you get it, you know when you get another set of shoes, you know if you want it all the way up here, all the way back here, what release angle you like, um, how much rubber contact you want. Um, but of course, you know, when you get new pedals, new shoes, you do need to wear these grooves in. So you're always going to go through that annoying break in period where uh, you're probably going to fall over a couple times, or it's just going to be a total pain in the ass to get the shoe out when you're yanking on the thing and it's, you know, digging that groove into the shoe of the rubber right there. That's kind of the tough part. Um, but again, when, once you get it all set up, you know, you're kind of set and you, you know what you like and you know what you're going to do the next set of pedals and shoes that you get. And you might just have to play around with it a little depending on if you changed a model of shoes or pedals. So to kind of sum things up here, um, major important things. The, the cleat with the two dots on the, uh, on the right foot is going to give you the earlier release angle. About 98% of people use that. I've been riding Crank Brothers for over 10 years and working in shops for over 10 years and almost everyone does that. It's uh, kind of the way to go. If you really want that crazy amount of float and a later release angle, then go otherwise. But uh, almost everyone, two dots on this cleat goes on your right foot for that earlier release angle. Um, shims, this is totally dependent on your shoe. Some shoes need two shims, some need three. Uh, most of them need none. 
And when you need none, you're gonna use the shorter bolts that this whole setup comes with. The longer ones, you know, you obviously you're gonna need a longer threads there if you're gonna start putting those shims in there. Um, traction pads for the for the newer candies and the newer mallets. Almost nobody uses them. I don't like them at all. Again, uh, it's an experimentation thing. If you want it to be super tight with a ton of contact, then go ahead, try that. Um, see what you like it. Your pins, um, figuring out your pins. The pins are gonna really determine how this thing clips in and how it clips out because if those pins are digging into all of this rubber it's obviously going to be a lot harder to twist your shoe off of that especially when it's brand new eventually it's just going to dig these grooves in but um, pay attention to that if, if it feels too hard to get out drive those pins down if it feels too easy um, you know drive the pins up or if you want it harder drive the pins up and it uh, pins again preference um, I, I know a guy who uh, is a World Cup downhill racer, loves his pins super high, and I asked him, why do you do that with your pins? Um, and for his preferences, he said, I'm not coming out in a downhill race, and if I do, it's probably not good, and I might need to ride a, a rock garden with my shoe not clipped in, and in that case, I want there to be a lot of pins on the shoe, and this is a top 10 World Cup downhill racer. So everyone's got a total crazy opinion on this sort of thing and it's it matters what works best for you and you figure that out by just experimenting and finding out you know your cleat position what pedals you like um, or you might even not like crank brothers and you might want to go with spds because you might like the ability to adjust the spring tension which you don't have on crank brothers but the biggest thing about crank brothers is because you lack the ability to adjust the spring tension they give you a lot of ability to change how much rubber contacts, which determines how hard it is to get in and get out and how much stability you have there. So uh, I'm a Crank Brothers fan. SPDs are a whole different world of, you know, being able to adjust the spring tension, a lot of different pedals that I'll use at SPD cleat design. I think Crank Brothers is a lot easier to clip in. I like the float personally. Um, SPDs don't have nearly as much float and some people like having no float. Um, it's again, total matter of preference, but uh, what it boils down to is trying, uh, breaking in your shoes, remembering you need to break in shoes. So if it's your first set of clipless shoes and pedals and you can't get in and you can't get out and you feel like a total squid, um, make sure they're set up correctly, number one. Uh, number two, lean against the wall and just clip in, clip out, clip in, clip out. Memorize where you clip in, where you clip out because there's certain spots where your pedal is on the crank where you just can't clip in or clip out. You know, a good example is, um, you know, if you're, this is the wrong shoe for the side of the bike, but if this is going to whack into your crank arm, obviously you can't twist your toe into your crank arm if, you're, if your foot's this way. So you're going to want to clip out here, here, maybe at the top, but you're going to memorize sort of these like red zones of where you just can't get your shoe out. And then uh, eventually it becomes second nature in your head of where you get in and where you get out. Um, so that part's easy, but setting it up is kind of the technical part and some interesting things that Crank Brothers have as far as features goes when it comes to the... Uh, you know, the, the different release angles depending on which cleat is on which foot. Um, the shims, the traction pads, the pins, this is all cool stuff that good features Crank Brothers has, um, which I love and are great. And these pedals work amazing once you get them dialed in. And uh, again, this is for a video for people who like clipless. If uh, you wanna try riding flats and have more fun riding flats than uh, ride flats, because I always tell people that are asking me, you know, what they should do. Uh, riding bikes is about having fun and if you have more fun riding flat pedals because you throw your feet on and off and you don't feel nervous that you're going to be stuck in and fall over, then ride flats. Like, feel comfortable on your bike. Enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. Um, and getting your pedals dialed in is a huge part to that and giving you more confidence to clip in and clip out. Just feel comfortable on the bike. And more comfortable you feel, the more fun you're going to have, the better you're going to ride. And that's what it's all about.